Like many graffiti artists, Kelly Towles began his art career in the 1990s as an outlet for his troubled high school life. Throughout the years, he realized he could stray from traditional graffiti and incorporate characters into his public artwork. Kelly's characters are usually inspired by real life incidents. These are people he meets throughout his day, individuals easily described as bullies. Kelly has taken his art a step further by donating his talents to the human rights campaign and creating a shirt design to help their anti-bullying initiative. My style of art, I would say, is very much controlled chaos. Um, I love to create characters and creatures. If you have someone driving down the road, say it's an 85 year old lady, and she has road rage and she starts flicking you off and cursing at you and telling you, you know, you're the devil. That lady doesn't really look like an 85 year old lady anymore. She actually looks like something else. She looks like, like some muscle bound jerk. So sometimes I actually use that as a process to paint. I started doing graffiti back in the 90s. And graffiti is the art form of creating lettering or your name in spray paint. And I was not good at lettering. I was horrible at it. So I basically started transitioning my love of graffiti and spray paint into just me painting my characters. You know, coming from a, a kind of a bad childhood background in high school, it was an outlet. It was just that it, I was a pissed off kid and I went out and painted. From that, I just kept going. Went to college, got an art degree. For my senior show, I just did graffiti characters on canvas and put them up and like, a lot of people liked it, but then I had one professor actually tell me, you know, they're cute, but they'll never sell in the art world. But then like a year later, I actually got my first solo show at a gallery that repped me. and. He came to the show and actually apologized. Like, he realized that it wasn't cute. It wasn't just that thing. And like, ever since these stepping points, I've actually gained encouragement in, from other people, but also just gained power in myself, realizing that you do what you want to do. There's no, there's no way, shape, or form that you shouldn't encourage anyone. And I actually had a 75-year-old woman come up to me and said, I started doing graffiti. And I encouraged her because that is an awesome, liberating idea. Because she said, yeah, I went under this bridge and I, I drew some graffiti. And I'm so happy I want to do some more. And I was like, awesome, here are some tips and guidelines. Try not to do it on other people's stuff because you know you're gonna you're gonna incur the wrath. Even though I love her logic, and if I was like 75 right now, I would definitely be going on doing graffiti because I do not know who would actually stop someone that is 75 years old with a can of spray paint. With the explosion of the internet came along that now you could actually be a marketable entity with your graffiti and street art. So say that little kid loves your street art so much that he wants to buy something from you, but he cannot afford a $3,000 painting. But he can afford a $25 shirt. And he can actually represent your artwork and walk around with it and maybe even have another person see it and think it's cool as well. That's an awesome you know, effect. You know, it, it's, it's affordable art for people to wear. I did a shirt for the human rights campaign. 
The character I created for the Human Rights Campaign is basically a heart with like arms and boxing gloves. This was the prototype? This is a reoccurring character I have. Like it's a heart, but basically it, it's kind of a play on, on life. You know, your heart gets beat up all the time, but you gotta still keep fighting. Human Rights Campaign is an amazing organization uh, to support gay, lesbian, transgender people. Um, there is a massive amount of people that get bullied and harassed because they are gay or they are lesbian or they are transgender, which is a ridiculous notion because, you know, this world is so vast and everyone is so different that people have an issue because somebody prefers to love someone else of their uh, own gender. And I have a two-year-old son. The day that my son comes home and tells me he's being bullied, it's gonna break my heart, but hopefully I will have raised him strong enough to A, stand up for it, and B, understand that there are people like this in the world. There are people that will tell you that you're wrong and indifferent, but to realize that there's way more people that are all different, that that one person's comments are pretty much null and void. So I connected with them and put out a shirt that supports anti-bullying and hopefully it will make a difference in people's lives. My wife has always been my pillar. She's been my stone. I would be a, a, a ship adrift if she wasn't my anchor. Meatballs? <laughs> I, I am completely forever grateful for my wife. And we're around each other so much that it's just the one greatest thing in my life. And the one greatest thing in my life gave birth to the other greatest thing in my life, which is my son. And my son has been my focal point. When my son came into this world, there is no words for the, how happy I was, but there was something that clicked, like right around here. I don't know what it was. As soon as he was born, I knew my next show. I knew how things were going to click. But beyond that, what he also made me realize is that if I don't make things happen, if I don't support my family, if I don't make money and, and have a career, I'm not gonna be able to be the father. I'm not going to be able to be the supporter. I'm not going to be able to be the foundation for my family. You know, a lot of the times I just want to make someone smile. If someone just smiles, you know, it, it works. You know, if I do a mural on the street and like someone just walks by it and they, they enjoy it or they take a picture of it or they, you know, hashtag it, you know, it, 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 it's awesome. I love it. I think there was some study that said like if someone stands in front of a piece of artwork for more than like 30 seconds, you win. The artist wins. Doesn't matter if you hate it, doesn't matter if you like it. What matters is that you put that much more time into paying attention to a piece of artwork that someone put their you know, passion into creating, that you're, you're giving it the amount of attention. That's it for this week. Join the conversation with us on social media. We are CCTV America on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. All of tonight's interviews can be found online at cctv-america.com. And let us know what you'd like us to take full frame next. Email us at fullframe at cctv-america.com. Until then, I'm Mike Walter in New York City. We'll see you next time.